Hi guys, this is Amar and welcome to Amar Tech Stuff. So guys, in this video, we're going to solve and uh, troubleshoot ticket. And uh, this ticket says that a network team uses uh, Telnet, which is port number 23, to log in into the device uh, 10.1.1.1. Uh, need to restrict the use of Telnet since Telnet is not secure. Uh, session is not encrypted, correct. So whenever you are using Telnet, the session is not encrypted. The session is not encrypted, uh, the information goes in the clear text, so it is not secure. Uh, enable SSH, which is port number 22, which is a secure protocol where the session is encrypted. So basically this ticket says that we need to uh, disable Telnet and enable SSH. Can be configured in working hours since no downtime is required. So let's start it now because no downtime is required and the device IP is 10.1.1.1. So I'll open a putty, give IP 10.1.1.1 and do SSH. You can see over here, SSH. So I'll open and here is the error what we are getting that is connection refuse. So whenever you're trying to do SSH into a device and you're getting in such kind of error connection is refused, that means SSH is not enabled on that device. So let's try taking Telnet, whether Telnet is happening or not. I'll just again open Putty 10.1.1.1 and I'll select Telnet. You can see I selected Telnet and open. So we are getting the access new device. Username is Amar, password is password is Cisco. So we got the access into device. What I'll do is I'll just make the font size a bit bigger so that maybe 16 I'll take. Okay. So we have got the access to the device. Now, uh, the major difference between SSH session and a Telnet session is that in the Telnet session, whatever the information is going through the session is in the clear text. It is not in the encrypted format. Whereas in SSH, whatever the information is going in from the session, in the session, uh, it is going in encrypted format. And to encrypt anything, we will require certain keys. Uh, so we have to generate a certain keys in order to enable SSH and to generate the keys we will need a host name of the device and the domain name, the IP domain name. So the very first step is that we will uh, we'll configure the host name and a domain name for this device because this device don't have a host name because R1 is something which is default so I'll just change the host name. I'll configure and host name say Pune router and I'll also configure an IP domain name IP domain I'll give the name as uh, let's say a random name I'm giving amartextof.net okay so i just given a random domain name uh, if you're working in a real environment uh, your company your organization will have an valid public domain name so at that time you need to need to actually use that domain name uh, i'm just here for uh, just for demonstration i'm just taking any random uh, domain name uh, so i just took amartextof.net uh, because my keys are going to associate with this domain name uh, now I'll create the keys. I'll go in the configuration mode and the command to create keys is crypto key generate. Okay, if you give this command, you'll find a lot of two options basically EC keys and RSA keys. Uh, so I'll generate the RSA keys. Okay, now you can see here the name of the keys will be Pune router dot Amar text of dot net. So whatever keys I'm creating for this particular router, uh, those crypto keys are going to have the name, which will include the host name of the device and the domain name. Okay. So how many bits in the model? So it is basically the uh, 
strength of the keys you want so the higher number you take uh, so the stronger the keys will be and the stronger the keys will be uh, it will be very difficult for any uh, intruder or a hacker to break that keys so by default uh, the size uh, is 512 bits I will take it as uh, 1024 bits so it is generating uh, 1024 bits RSA keys sometimes on some routers uh, practically on some routers it will take a longer time so don't worry whenever you are uh, you know generating this keys from router to router it may vary so you have to keep some patience so the keys are generated now how to check the keys the command is show ssh no show ip ssh yes so these are the two commands basically show ssh and show ip ssh so show ip ssh is the command which shows the keys here you can see the keys and show ssh shows the ssh session once you log into the device using any ssh session uh, you will see uh, an ssh session over here so show ip ssh So you can see the SSH is enabled over here and the version is 1.99 that is version 2. Uh, you can see the authentication time mode and this stuff and here you can see the key size which we customized and kept it as 1024 and uh, you can see here the ISO keys this, are, this is the key basically okay the SSH RSA key. So we have configured the username Oh, sorry the host name for the device uh, we configured the domain name for the device and we generated the crypto keys now the last thing which we need to do is we need to check once uh, what is the configuration under line vty so we'll just check it you can see under line vty the configuration is transport input telnet that means uh, for uh, logged in into virtually if you want to log into this device you can do it only via telnet but i don't want telnet i want only ssh so what i'll do is i'll go in the configuration mode give this command line vty0 is 15 transport input ssh so i only want ssh i don't want telnet to happen i only want ssh if i want telnet and ssh both I'll give the command transport input SSH telnet or telnet SSH anyways. So I just want SSH to happen. I don't want telnet to happen because the ticket, what the ticket we have got is that we have to enable SSH and disable the telnet. So I've done this configuration. Now I'll exit from this uh, prompt. I'll open the putty again and this time I'll try to do telnet first of all okay so see I'm trying to do telnet so now the telnet is refused okay I'll open the putty again 10.1.1.1 and I'll try to do SSH now so this is what I'm doing now SSH yes it is asking me login as Amar, password, Cisco, animal password, Cisco. So I've logged in into this device. You can see if I give show SSH, we'll find the SSH session which is built over on this router. Just zoom in into this and show you. So this is the SSH session which is formed. Um, you can see an in and out session because it's a bi-directional session. So uh, this session is formed and this is version 2 session so guys in this way uh, you can uh, enable uh, ssh on your device and disable telnet on your device uh, it, it is always recommended to use ssh since it is more secure so guys i'll stop in this video i'll catch up with you in the next video uh, i hope uh, you like this video if you really like this video guys do like uh, this video do subscribe my channel Amar Tech Stuff and uh, please comment, please give me a proper appropriate feedback so that I can come up with more stuff. Uh, I'll stop here. I'll catch up in the next video. Till then, thanks. Have a nice day.